Captain's Log Supplemental. Ensign Barker brought back an interesting find from the latest away mission, a uh, food synthesizer from the 23rd century. It was found aboard an old wrecked constitution class. Uh, unfortunately, he and several other crew members decided to give it some power and taste test some of the meal options. Uh, it turns out the matrix instructions on those little recipe cards must have degraded over time. Doc had to pump their stomachs. everybody, welcome to another episode of Captain's Log Supplemental. My name is Stanford. I am joined this week, as in all weeks, by my two friends and co-hosts, Chris. Hey there. And Rob. Oh there. And we are very carefully reined in by our lovely producer, Mariah. Um, hi, th- hi there. I just want to point out that uh, Rob preceded Mariah's introduction by ho there. So rude. Uh, that was... Yeah. Not the oh, joke. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we're not recording in the same room, Rob, he feels a lot, a lot bolder to call my wife a hoe. That's how mm-hmm. I would going. never. Uh, of un- all people, Rob would un- never. Believable. <laughs> now, Chris. What? I would never. <laughs> <laughs> like, not seriously. Uh, like, maybe as a joke. But Rob wouldn't even as a joke. Yeah. No, maybe. I would be terrified. I mean, I've called I you guys hoes as a joke, like my, my male friends. I don't think I've ever called a woman even as For a the joke. record, I don't abuse Rob. He's not afraid of me for any of those reasons. Mostly. He's, he's just a respectful young man. <laughs> Unlike the other two of you. Ew, are I'm you the youngest person respectful. in this podcast, Rob? I, I am by a month and like eight days. Watch your mouth, Rob. Ooh, yeah, you better respect your elders. Hmm. Which is something they do in this episode, sort of, kind of. Captain's um, Log Supplemental is a <laughs> weekly rewatch podcast where we rewatch Star Trek, starting in chronological order. We're almost done with season three of Enterprise. If you like what you hear, including all of this horrendous misogyny out of my friend Rob. <laughs> wait, what? You should tell your friends. <laughs> to give us a rating. Give us five stars. We are five star people on pretty much everywhere you get podcasts. And uh, you apparently, know, I'm not. I'm about to get canceled over here. <laughs> get us some more. Get us some ratings. Uh, the more five stars we get, the more we will send Rob to sensitivity training. Yeah, yeah. It's direct correlation. God damn it. <laughs> uh, this might be our best intro ever. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. Not because it's bad, but because we just 10. don't do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. I, I, I wanted to come in with all this fun stuff today, but I'm going to be honest. Uh, we didn't even watch Star Trek this morning, Liam and I. We watched Mythbusters. Have you, have you seen that show recently? Um, I watched a Did- bunch of it, like, Back when it was like on, but I remember watching it in high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always forget just how shitty TV was twenty years yeah. ago. <laughs> like, like the quality of the techno the technology. Mm-hmm. I I can still hear that narrator's voice in my head. Mm-hmm. That one and um, uh, what was it? Uh, how it's made. The that's, how it's made guy. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, the, how it's made is also on HBO. That was it. Interesting. Yeah, so I, I used to fall asleep to that show so many times. <laughs> oh, that's probably a good one to fall asleep to. I used to watch it, really it with my is. siblings, and they had one was like how it's made. Was one episode was like eye eye surgery for oh, some God. reason, and oh, so God. like my siblings are like, "This is awesome!" And I'm on the couch like cowering and like <laughs> like imagined like pain in my eyeballs as I'm watching them yep. like slice people's fucking retinas open and shit. I re- I remember that one. Yeah, it was horrendous it was horrible they have a machine the size of like you know a, a, an entire person that's that's job is to slice a tiny piece of your fucking eyeball apart and then they fucking like peel that shit back yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and they, put a, they put a marker ring of ink on it so they can line it back up after properly i don't Ugh. want anyone having to line my eyeball back up that's fucked up no fuck i you. hate it i hate it so much <laughs> i've been fucking tears Ugh. 
Oh, man. So, speaking of uh, uh, so hideous it made me cry, um, in the cold open of this week's episode, uh, they put some old <laughs> person makeup on, uh, on Tabal. Oh, oh, Tabal was oh. terrible. It was I mean, listen, fucking terrible. Listen, at least it was better than just making Archer's hair a little more silver. I feel like they've aged her before and it wasn't this bad. I don't know why this time she had to look like she had some kind of pox. Like, it was... <laughs> It she looked she looked atrocious. like the the woman from Titanic, but like, you know, it's like been eighty four years. It's <laughs> been eighty four years. Uh, uh, no, the Kate best is part it? is they're like they're like, okay, listen, you have to be old, so be to Paul, but sound old. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. Yeah, they, they did not like age her voice up synthetically. They're just like no, no. pretend to be an no. old woman. Oh, well, when I was your age, you just like perfect. Do, do, no, no, do, do, do that. Do an old did woman you, uh, voice. Did you did you see who the director was for this week, Stafford? Oh fuck, is it Levar Burton again? It is not. No, it's Roxanne Dawson. It was uh, Blanda Torres. Oh, Blanda Torres. Okay. Well, so anyways, this week's episode is called E Squared. Which fun trivia right off the bat? Uh, that is technically. Oh, I was gonna get this visually. The smallest Star Trek episode title in existence. Yes. It is competing oh. with an episode called Q2. Q2, yep. However, because this used the superscript 2, it is technically a little right. smaller. Yep. Yep, I saw that one too, yeah. Uh, Are we following, like, PEMDAS rules? Is that how this works? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck this no, it's technically, like, it's technically, like, size-wise a half-character. So it's, yes. it's, it's, uh, a yes. If bit, you were a to bit... use a mono spaced font that did include superscript characters, it would be shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, uh, we got a recap. I ignored it. We got to, uh, <laughs> the cold open, which was, uh, basically a Vulcan meditation scene where we cut to, well, not cut to like pan to, to Paul in the worst old person makeup ever. Then another Vulcan that we don't recognize shows up and says, you know, it's time. And then we get the fuck out of there. It's the shortest cold open I've ever seen on this show. It was pretty short. Yeah. It's, uh... it's like 45 seconds tops mm-hmm. straight to faith of the heart. Um, we come back to meditation again, but this time with young unpoxed to Paul. <laughs> uh, she's uh, kind of basically is trying to meditate and deal with her emotional drug withdrawal bullshit. Right. And, um, trip shows up to, uh, talk to her about, uh, the fact that he's not sleeping after some light repartee. We realize that trip is actually not having trouble sleeping. He just wants to, uh, fuck to Paul again. No, no, no. He he hey. wanted to make sure she was hey. okay. <laughs> Don't misconstrue his, okay. his motives. Right. Well, first of all, Trip can't just say the word sex like an adult. He has to be all he, weird and cagey about it. He wanted to make okay. sure she was okay with his penis. Okay. That to be was- fair. <laughs> To be fair, T'Pol also can't just say sex like a normal adult either. Yeah. She says uh, like, she's a Vulcan. Had sexual relations. Sexual relations because she's a Vulcan. Yeah, that's that's how they. That's, no, no, no. no that's, she's definitely weird about it. That's ba- that's <laughs> yeah. basically scanty as compared to like normal Vulcan behavior. She's like, all in the pursuit of science. It's <laughs> like if she was taking the word and like holding it out in front of her, like pinched in her finger, like. Yeah. Um, this is the first yeah. of two very like early two thousands like rom com scenes. Um, yeah. but basically like it's just like be like I I I'm I'm good like just go ahead and be in love or whatever because now this this it's no longer sexual tension it's more like uh, all right can we let's let's go let's 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 let let them have a relationship it's okay. But Stanford, um, what will they? Or won't they? Uh, see, I don't. I, we already know they will. <laughs> this is confirmed. This uh, this is confirmed <laughs> before, and it's going to be confirmed again in this episode. <laughs> so, uh, we get out of there to uh, see how we are dealing with some plans uh, to get through the nebula with Archer and Paul talking about like, oh, you know, Dagger gave us this information about these assholes who are guarding this nebula. Um, they're going to have a, a real tough time getting through uh, like the, the space corridor because there's going to be a lot of sensor issues inside the gas, but they're, they're planning their little trip along this like gas vein. 
Right, and they've they've detected all these alien ships right. that they've already been told are big jerks about it. Sure. Um, we cut then to a completely useless scene with Degra that like has no bearing on this week's episode <laughs> whatsoever, and we my, do uh, not go back to it again. My note was nothing really happens here. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just Degra, the black dude, and who do we get a name for that guy? I don't want to sound like accidentally racist because <laughs> I didn't memorize the black guy's name, but I'm not sure they've ever said his name. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was in credit somewhere. Let me let me look that up while you keep going. Sure. Uh and then and then the the arboreal guy. Um, right. whose name I also don't have. Um De- I only know Degra's name because there was that whole episode that was involving specifically him. Hmm. Um Plus they say it a lot. Yeah. They're having some kind of argument about something. I gotta be honest, I wasn't paying a lot of attention because I was kinda like, what's happening? And then we it was cut mostly, out of there and never went back. So it was a- mostly like hemming and hawing about, well, you know, uh, they're 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 not going to let Archer speak at this thing. And yeah, can we trust you... the humans? And all, also, and I guess like they're like, but we've heard that they've, we've gotten signs of another human ship in the expanse because they had to kind yeah. of stupidly foreshadow what's going to happen. Yeah, in like three that scenes. was about the only thing relevant to this episode. But it there. was it was a fucking terrible scene. I do not know why. Well, actually, I suspect I have a reason why this scene exists, but we'll get into it in the deep dive. Okay, so the uh, the the arboreal does have a name. His name is Janar, J A N N A R. Tell me with um, your actual human mouth, they did not name the black guy. His name is Counselor One. <laughs> God, that is how it's credited. God damn it! Uh, He's been in this show like at least a half a dozen scenes. times with many yeah. speaking parts, and he's never named. Dude, he's not even named on Memory Alpha. Holy shit. That's pretty rough. God damn. I, I like, guess Travis is the only black guy that gets a name in this show? Fuck the hell. I was just saying, the Arboreal guy has about the same amount of scenes and like speaking parts, I think, as that guy does. Yeah, why does, why does that guy have a fucking name? I would be, I would be, I would genuinely oh. be surprised if he had as many speaking roles as the black guy. Yeah, he's he showed up like only halfway through the and oh, also I guess he was on the I, council. I recognize mm-hmm. that guy. He's an actor. Like he's oh, yeah. he's been in other he's stuff. He's been in lots of stuff. Yeah. yeah, he's like a TV actor. Well now I'm just mad again. Um okay, we're back to the Enterprise. Uh they're 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 about to kind of launch into the nebula, but then they get a sensor reading on an incoming ship. It shows up and that's weird. It's a Starfleet uh, signal. An X class, yeah. And an X class. And they put it on screen. And it's like, is it the Columbia is not ready yet? That's the NXO two. But then they like cut to like a close up of the front and <gasps> gasp. It's the Enterprise, but with like <laughs> a badass lightning taser thingy on the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like a bunch of random shit stuff, stuff just like was. yeah. Um, they hail. They get an answer. It's the male Vulcan that we saw in the cold open, and uh, we're gonna have a conversation. Um, we then like get this kind of rundown of what happened. So what happened is that this enterprise is not like from the future. So sort of, it kind of is though, but not really. Yeah. So what happened was they were going to fly into a purple spatial butthole and Mm. (laughs) they did, but then like, I guess it puckered the The impulse (laughs) wake. Made the, time travel possible. Shut up! It's how it works. Yeah, it's the fine. wake from their 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 manifold made the butthole pucker, and then it spat them out <laughs> like 113 years into the past. Okay, or 17. We receive all of this through what I can only describe as the world's greatest fuck up in terms of bad past tense filters put on a fucking camera. Yeah, dude, I don't. It was making me literally nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird yeah it was a weird flashback filter like like it's like we don't like need to it's like they could you can just do like a regular like flashback yeah. you gotta put like a just weird ass grainy filter it, it, on it yeah just tell us it was but not only like but also overexposed and stuff like it was some uh, kind of dream sequence it was fucking awful it was terrible they even they even messed with the audio too yeah it was all mm-hmm. like tinny yeah um while uh, in this awful camera mode, we um, we find out that T- Paul determines that the space butthole was a one way street. Uh, they can't get they can't get back to the future through the butthole. Um, That's a, it's it's only an out. You can't go in. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. awfully prudish of you, Stanford. <laughs> it's not me, it's to Paul. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's a Vulcan, so, you know. We already found out in an earlier episode they don't like gay people, so, like, it's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. So, um, they're kind of running through all this. So, basically, they determined that they went too far, and they went really far into the past. Uh, Travis, like, the stars are all weird in there, and, you know, a hundred and whatever years past. Um, but they want to stick to their mission. So the, uh, the Vulcan who's running the ship now, his name is Lorian, um, which is actually a reference to the Lorian elves from. Yes. Lord I see you've got the same trivia notes I did on this episode. I also <laughs> looked at memory alpha. <laughs> the big trivia for this episode is actually going to be my deep dive. So don't worry about that. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Lorian, um, explains that, uh, you know, they went back in time and that their, their goal is to basically show up here and prevent them from going into the space hey. butthole. I do have, I do have another trivia note Uh-oh. on Lorian. Okay. Apparently the vest he was wearing in this. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, was the, uh, the same one Jake Sisko wore in the final seasons of, uh, Deep Space Nine. Can, Jake Sisko did say... wear a lot of fucking vests. He did. He was a vest wearing son of gun. Can I just say that it's very appropriate that Archer's descendant is named Karen? <laughs> yeah, Karen Archer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's like his Sorry, great continue. granddaughter or whatever. Uh huh. Jake Sisko, black guy, had a name. Maybe you should have, <laughs> maybe you should take a fucking note from that enterprise. Hmm. Um to Ball's like, uh, all of this seems a little far fetched, and then Lorian's like, calm yourself, mother, and it's <laughs> creepy and weird. <laughs> Yeah, what's well, weird? She's like, but she's like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, there's like, and then uh, Karen, Karen's like, well, why don't we go talk to Doctor Flox and he can get this all sorted out by doing some DNA tests. And Doctor Flox is only too excited to tell everybody who fucked who. Oh yeah. my god, this turns into a dating game so fast. As Flox is like, yeah, yeah. Karen's like Archer and some lady that showed up later. And then fucking to Paul and trip. We're definitely banging to make this fine gentleman right here. Cause Lorian is indeed to Paul and trips son. Nice. Okay. So, uh, we get back to when we come back for act two after flocks explaining all the, um, the, the past, uh, the hundred, the century old orgies that they all had. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot. I mean, to go from these people had children to orgies. I mean, well, Doctor Flox was involved. Well, he did have nine kids. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Trip is kind of bonding with his son in a weird way. There's some ominous music. I don't know. Lorian's kind of a dick this whole time. All right, go <laughs> ahead. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so like the. The um the thing he's using, um, that Trip is using the little tools he takes from the toolbox is actually apparently like a Radio Shack decibel meter. Huh? Uh, it is a uh, apparently it was a tradition at the time of using like various Radio Shack gadgets as Star Trek props. Yeah, okay, um, that's pretty fun. Even yeah, that apparently- didn't salvage that shit company though. Yeah, in the original series, uh, one of the props was like a Radio Shack tape head uh, demagnetizer, uh, too. So yeah, apparently it's, it's it's something they did quite often. We got to use those at work. Oh yeah, hard drives. Yeah, to hide yeah. shit from the feds. Uh, no, so that we could reuse old tapes for long term storage. That's less exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, turns out Trip uh, died when Lorian was fourteen. Uh, Trip's like, damn, how'd I die? And Lorian's like, I'm not sure we should be discussing your future, which I find an odd statement considering that they're literally here to change the future. Um, yep. So I'm not sure. Does that mean that Trip dies of like a condition he's already got then? Like, sorry, dad, you die of cancer. You've already got it. Fuck you. Like, I don't know. It's a weird damn. thing to say. I feel like it was just like, we don't need to go into this. This is irrelevant detail. You know? Yeah. Uh, so Karen is talking to Archer, uh, and he's like, uh, oh, so everyone kind of paired up and, da, 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 and, they're, and they're, oh, they're walking around the new enterprise, new enterprise, old enterprise. Uh, that's the future enterprise. Um, and, uh, he's like a lot of these kids and stuff, they're like aliens and humans and, 
and is that kid Denobulin? And uh, Karen goes, many of our crew are descendants of Phlox. And I went, hey, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Phlox is fucking, uh, he fucks a lot, a lot. But he's, it turns he's, out he's, him and his wife just had nine goddamn kids. Just pumping them out. Um, I forget. I It was Amanda, I think was the name, but I can't uh, yeah. remember. Was it Cutler? I don't remember Cutler's first name. Uh, look that up. Okay. Yeah, I, I bet, I bet even Cutler has a fucking as... full name and like a backstory. I'm like, I was here not referred to as Crubin Cutler. I don't remember, remember hearing a first name. Yeah. Amanda Cole. Oh, this is the Mako that was hitting on trip. Oh. Ah. Interesting. All right. Well, sure. Uh, my favorite scene of this uh, this whole series is coming up soon. Or this whole episode. Uh, oh my god! I have one that's all in caps in my notes, so I'm wondering if we're all synced up on that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, Karen is like, "Hey, someone wants to talk to you." Uh, she leads Archer into a room where um, uh, T'Pol is deformed by some horrifying makeup because old T'Pol wants to talk to Archer. Um. My note here is Jesus Christ, she looks terrible. Uh, mm-hmm. this is where you really get her old lady voice coming out. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, basically she's like, it's been 84 years and all that shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, her old voice sounds incredibly like my old lady voice. Yes, it's <laughs> it's almost like condescending. <laughs> um, Travis and Hoshi are, uh, having, uh, some kind of meal and they're talking about, uh, who they who they end up hooking up with, which is like that's genuinely a funny a funny conversation to have. Like I would like in real life and be like, fuck yeah, who did I end up? Like that's hilarious. Mm. Oh, but it gets better. And then oh, it gets so much better. I have <laughs> ha 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 Reed died alone. Because yeah. apparently no one would go would fuck Reed. My yes. my note was apparently Reed died sad and alone, laughing my ass off. <laughs> And then it gets like super awkward for Hoshi yeah, and Travis. Hoshi and Travis oh, yeah. are like, oh, wow. Um, because they, they want to be like, well, I'm sure you'll, you'll find someone. But then they're like, well, but you didn't. So it sucks to be you, bitch. Um, and then uh, I think uh, oh, that's when Hoshi's like, well, a third of the crew is female. So I guess there had to be some bachelors. Um, so they leave and then Reed and then immediately Reed sees a woman and starts flirting. And, and, and yeah, immediately hits on a subordinate is what I've yeah. written down. It's so fucking awful. Um, so it turns out Wrinkly Gross to Paul found a problem with the uh, plan that Lorian has. Lorian's plan is to modify the Enterprise's warp drive to go really fucking fast so that they don't have to use the space butthole to meet up with Degra. Um, and if you're asking yourself, well, why doesn't he just modify his own enterprise to go that fast? The reason is because their antimatter injectors are too old and can't handle the stress. I I thought that you were going to say, why didn't he just modify his own butthole? (laughs) I have no idea the condition of Lorian's butthole. It may be modified. (laughs) It may not be. Now, that seems like a very specific plot point. And it is a very specific plot point, and it will come back up in a few minutes here, and it will be immediately broken later. But like for now, the reason that they couldn't use the other Enterprise is because the antimatter injectors are too old. Okay, fine. They needed more lube. Uh, Archer talks to Lorian is like, yo, um, can you like, you didn't tell me that there was a risk to this plan of yours. And Lori is like, there's only a 22% chance of all of you dying. I don't understand what the big deal that is. That's a high percentage. This had um, one of the best quotes in the whole episode here, where Archer goes, I've got two T'Pol's who disagree with you. Oh, I missed that. That's a good line. That is a good line. Yeah. Um, this is where I started calling him Commander Douche Vulcan. Um, because <laughs> he starts arguing with his mom, and he's just kind of a super big douche about everything. It's but like, then uh, like, he ends God up being mom. like... Uh. So he goes, well, we're going to have to, he talks to Karen. He's like, we're going to have to just take their injector so that we can use our ship to get to the dead girl point. Because and, that totally makes sense. And which like, that doesn't make sense because then why didn't you just go there? Initially. Initially. Like, why didn't you just show up there instead of coming to, cause you had 107 years to get this right, but you like decided to come here. 
So, but like, okay, but you're gonna you're gonna steal the Enterprise's good injectors. Use your plan to get your shitty Enterprise over there. And Karen's like, well, but won't you leave them stranded if you take their injectors? And he says, my dad will be able to fabricate new injectors. Okay, then why didn't you just do that? You've got 107 (laughs) fucking years to figure this shit out, man. Like, what is this plan? So this plan is shit, and it's immediately stupid. They could have just brought them with them. They could have just swapped ships if there was... Well, no, they couldn't just bring them with them because... Um, the reason that the Archer and them don't want to do it is because they don't want to die. It's not that Lorian has a better chance of surviving. He's just willing to take the risk. Dick. Like a, yeah, like a douche Falcon. All right. Um, Trip shows up and he's like, Hey, to Paul, uh, shouldn't we be like in a romance? Cause that definitely happens. And it's not really like a great way to start a conversation. I'm not a real big fan of Trip kind of browbeating her about this like potential future that they had. Um, but the rest of the scene is very early 2000s rom-com as they kind of go, they kind of repartee back and forth about whether mm. or not they should be, you know, in a relationship. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a very, it was yeah. fine. It was, it yeah. was, it is what it is. Um, I'm just not a fan of trip kind of like cold cocking her with the, uh, the, uh, Hey, you ended up fucking me over there. So let's go. I mean, um, you know, they had already had sexual relations. Right. Uh, <laughs> so I I don't think it's it's too crazy or anything for him to bring that up. Trip drops in on Lorian stealing his injectors. Um, the, he can't stop him from doing so. Lorian stuns him and they take the injectors. And then we get like this, I guess, I don't know. By the way, I want to point out. He didn't, he could, he didn't take the opportunity to say, don't shoot your daddy. <laughs> Fair, yeah, enough. Trip, Fair enough. Trip likes to say daddy. My next note here is why are you hitting yourself? And I'm guessing that's when the two enterprises were shooting at each other. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, yes my point was, this is a silly fight. Yes, it was. This is silly. a great fight. The CGI was okay. It wasn't as good as it sometimes is in this show, um, but it wasn't the worst. Um, Reed has says that they have the same complement of weapons, which is a objectively not true because their phasers are blue. Yeah. But also <laughs> B, they didn't improve shit in over a hundred years. What have yeah. they been doing? What have they been doing? They, they spent a hundred years putting that badass lightning effect on the front. And <laughs> one thing that I mean, this show definitely says is that no matter what you do to the NX class enterprise, it obviously needs some tubes on the bridge that have lights go up and down because not only yeah. does this one do that, but also the future trip one when Archer had the like time bug in his brain mm. also had that random ass addition to the bridge. Well, yeah, I'm sure they just pulled the prop out of storage. To when they went to film. I feel like they oh, were yeah, a different 100%. color in this episode, but maybe. Um, so then Enterprise Archer's plan at this point, because they're they're kind of matched evenly. Um Archer's although well, so they're at, matched evenly in armaments, but Archer's Enterprise is still kind of busted up from the fight with the reptilians. So they're not really doing great. So Archer's plan is to just start beaming random shit off of their ship until he catches something important. Um, Dude, this was great. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy this. Like, why don't we do this more often? This seems like it's a very effective thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In my notes, I had, ha, they finally weaponized the transporter. And I guess, like, I guess, like, they, they, they do know the, the, the layout of the Enterprise pretty clearly. Sure. So, like, it might be easier to do it to their own ship. Um, so they beam eventually enough power related things out of the ship that, like, they're like, well, now you're not going anywhere and we're not going anywhere. So why don't we trade our stuff like back and forth and douche Lorian wants to shoot them with a fucking torpedo, but they convince him to stand down. Yeah. Karen, Karen Archer talks him down. He's like, we yeah. can't kill them. Are you fucking insane? <laughs> and Lorian's like, I might be, I might be yeah. insane. Yeah. We come back from the commercial break to this have a weird cut. Lorian just in the brig already. Yeah. Like what happened here? Yeah. It is a weird cut. Uh, some editing happened here. <laughs> like, what, um, what, what was the, the what happened? Like, how did this happen? I can't They're even tell whose ships. break he's in. Like, yeah. Um, he's like, 
kind of pissy about everything. And uh, Archer's like, you know, you're awfully emotional for a Vulcan. He's like, well, I'm also human. Fuck you. Yada, yada, yada. Um, eventually, Archer's trying to convince him, like, we, we have to work together and find a different way to do this. Uh, T'Pol goes and visits herself. It's, I don't know. This conversation was dumb, except for the part where old T'Pol's like, you should totally fuck Trip, by the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she, like, smiles over it. She's like, yeah, he can, he can help also, you. Yeah, can, can <laughs> slice your uh, self off a piece of that pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> I I did appreciate old T'Pol just casually ruining T'Pol's day by saying, like, yeah, those emotions... You're yeah, never gonna yeah, get rid of those that drug addict stuff. Yeah, that's 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 with you forever. Good luck, bitch. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like it felt like it felt like Yoda talking to Luke because, mm-hmm. like, at the end, she ends the conversation with like, "You will in time. You will. You will be. You yeah. will yeah. be. And you don't forget to suck be. that southern dick." <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's horny. <laughs> for watching her younger self go after her younger tri- trip. Anyways. Make um, sure you get yours. <laughs> <laughs> they uh they make a plan a new plan to get them into the space butthole. Um my my note here is like obviously the old enterprise is going to sacrifice itself to get them in safely. That was we all, my exact quote, my exact note as well. We all know that that's going to happen because like obviously it's going to happen. Yeah. Um so they're flying in, so they're like, okay, so we, we, like we understand their plan. So the new, the the current, the I don't know, Enterprise Prime, Archer's Enterprise, and Lorian's Enterprise. Archer's Enterprise is flying towards the space butthole, and the alien assholes, those are not buttholes, there's, those are there's assholes. There's a lot of anus talk going on. <laughs> they fly in and start. I guess they're like the toilet paper, right? Because they're they're clean, they're they're searching for stuff around the butthole. And they're shooting at the Enterprise, and Archer's like, well, shit, this is not going great. I hope Lorian acts soon. And then Lorian decides to to come in, and what that means is he was perfectly underneath the other Enterprise, and he comes out and starts shooting at them in what I can only really, it was just the stupidest thing I've ever seen in this show. So it doesn't make any sense. Shut the fuck up. What are, quick, what are we doing here? Quick trivia note here. Oh, God. The, uh, the, uh, the Kavalan, I guess is what they were called ships, the Tech yeah. Enterprise was apparently a reuse of a digital model that was used for the mysterious alien ship from Silent Enemy, the previous oh, episode. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Interesting. Um, well, the Kavala are apparently stupid as rocks because they didn't see the fact that there were just two ships in front of them. I understand mm. sensor echoes, etc. But like they have, do they have eyeballs? They have eyeballs. They I, just see like, if two. I remember correctly, when, when Enterprise entered into the nebula, didn't their like main screen get all fuzzy? They have windows. They're right there. <laughs> um, now. This was their plan, I guess. Although I do question why the Enterprise that's expected to survive this was the one to bear the brunt of the attacks. I feel like you should have put Lorian's Enterprise. It's it's in better condition. Like, to get hit first. Because that would have been confusing. Shut up. Uh, Enterprise uh, has its thrusters damaged or its impulse engines damaged or whatever. So they're starting to slow down. But then we find out that Lorian's Enterprise doesn't have grapplers. It has a fucking tractor beam. See, they did that thing too. I mean, they didn't improve the weapons, but they had a cool tractor beam. Tractor beam plus taser. Yeah. No, that is an obvious downgrade. (laughs) (laughs) Um, they successfully ride through the spatial butthole. Um, the lesson that this show teaches us after this is, man, time travel sure is confusing. Um, and then Degra <laughs> shows up the end. Yeah, we get some. We, yeah, we get some some like time travel paradox exposition between T'Pol and Archer. Um, they're like, "Yep, that's uh, well, maybe they're not there because we made it through successfully." They're like, "I don't know." Hey, look, it's Degra's ship. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 it was it was poorly wrapped. Um, can I, can I ask a, a theoretical question? I love th- a theoretical questions. Okay. So had they just like ignored Lorian and just made for the butthole, do you think that if they had 
gotten thrown back in time, could they just keep like replicating future crews of the Enterprise until they amassed enough Enterprises that they could have just overwhelmed the Kavalans and made it through okay? No, no, because no, because it would just be the one Enterprise, Rob. I don't like that. Good. <laughs> oh, well, then no, then yes, whatever you need, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> this is the end. Uh, so on a scale from uh, one to five, where zero is threshold, uh, what do we what do we think of this one? I think I'm a three for this one. It wasn't like there wasn't anything particularly egregious. There was some silly parts. Uh, there was some some stuff that was fun enough to make it interesting. Yeah, it's a three. I'm I am fairly certain that they were just browsing the internet and found some like crazy fan fiction that went through this exact scenario and made an episode of it. Four out of five stars. This <laughs> is a lot of fun. Um, I also gave it a three. It was a low three. I almost gave it a two because of T'Pol's bad, like, oldness. Okay, yeah, that was pretty rough. But, like, um, like that's really the only thing that was, like, like bad. Everything else was just kind of meh. Yeah, and that's why I allowed it to be a three because it's kind of standard Star Trek-y. Um... However, and this uh, this is what we'll come back to in the deep dive. This episode could have been so much better. Mm. And we will come back to that. In Welcome back. So as may have been evident in the last segment, Chris and I perused the same bit of trivia, uh, probably on memory alpha about this episode. Um, one of the things they talked about were a couple of deleted scenes, which is the first time I've actually seen explicit deleted scenes here on memory alpha. So I found that to be kind of interesting, but they also had a very lengthy trivia about what this script was supposed to be before someone fucked it up. I actually did not look at Memory Alpha for my trivia. I just found them. Um, they're like in in uh, the player, like the Amazon, because I have it linked to to. Oh, it's like X Ray trivia or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Oh uh, well, excuse me, Mister Fancy Pants McGee. Well, I was looking on uh, the poor man's X Ray Memory Alpha, <laughs> um, and I found a lengthy trivia note that explained that this episode was originally written to be better, but then yeah. got changed and got stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have an opinion is what you're saying. Well, you could say that. So here's the thing. So remember when Reed says, uh, is it the NX 2 Because they saw that it was clearly an NX class ship and Archer's like, it's not done yet. And the answer was no, it's clearly the enterprise. Cause we zoomed in on it. In the original script, it actually was the NX-02. Really? Yes. Huh. And here's how that was supposed to work. The Enterprise is trying to go through the space butthole. And... Space butthole! As is evident in this episode, it does not go well. The Tavaran attack them, and they just can't because they're so beat up from the reptilian things. They're you know, working on a bad warp coil that they stole from from those other people. So it's just not, it's not working great because like the war coil knows it's stolen. So it's just, it's just trying to keep them back. Yeah. Um, so they just don't make it to the butthole before the Tavarans finally overwhelm their defenses and they explode. However, right before they do, Archer gets off a, a last minute desperate message through the subspace relays back to earth. So forest hears Archer's final message, which explains what happened, where they were going, and why it all went wrong. Okay. In a, in, a, in a desperate attempt to make sure that the overall mission still goes well, Forrest rushes through a piece of technology that, the, uh, that Earth has been working on for several weeks now, which is an integration of Zindi Vortex travel into Starfleet warp engines. They plug this into the NX-02, which is just coming fresh off the line. Still got some bugs to work out, but they really, really desperately need to get back to the Expanse soon because they know the weapon's going to be launched soon. So they fire this thing up, and the NX-02 vanishes and does not come back because due to some sort of situation involving the Starfleet warp and the Zindi Vortex machine, they end up going back in time. 
Yes. Replacement techno baggable. Got it. Yep. So the NX-02 was originally supposed to be the ship that got thrown back in time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Their plan was, well, we can't do anything with Earth because that'll fuck with the timeline. But what we can do is go fix this issue because technically none of those people are involved in our project. So like it's a little safer. It's not as much of a time paradox because they were planning on going anyways. Right. Mm -hmm. So their plan was to go and prevent the enterprise from blowing up to give them just a little bit of aid on this particular like moment and they were going to save the enterprise right after archer fired off that message okay that way they would still be sent back in time but archer would still be able to complete his side of the mission as far as i can tell that was the original plan for this plot and it is way better Hmm. okay um i disagree only because the script we got officially canonized incel read (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah it really it really did do a good job of uh making him totally lame and a loser all right how about this how about this how about this what if um because he had a desperate need to show up his son reed's father enlisted in starfleet and joined the crew of the columbia <laughs> and then his father had more children on the columbia that passed on a family message to Reed that told him he was disappointed in him Amazing. All right, no I'm down notes. for that. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. All right. <laughs> See, we can fix the little things. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason I say that this 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 idea was better is two reasons. One, it fixes the paradox because here we have that kind of time paradox that always shows up in these fucking shows, which is like, well, you went back in time, so then you fixed the thing that sent you back in time, but then like well, but then you didn't go back in time, so then it wasn't fixed. And I, I'm an, I, those paradoxes annoy me because they're stupid. Right. That's kind of the inherent nonsense of time travel. Right. This fixes that because they can still make sure that this happens. Um, the other thing I like is that um, it gets rid of T'Pol having to do that terrible old lady voice in that <laughs> shitty makeup. Um, because but don't to- you want to young T'Pol to bang trip? <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so, like, young to or old to Paul didn't actually need to be in this episode really at all. She gave one piece of information and told to Paul to go fuck Trip. That was it. That information could have been delivered in lots of different ways. But like, or she could have like, you know what? To Paul knowing this plan before she died, she could have left a message for Archer. Any number of things. But like, you didn't yes. need old lady to Paul. Tell T'Pol to go bang trip. Uh, make it an order, Captain. <laughs> Good. Oh, <Whack>. gosh. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, uh, hold on. I wanted to read this. Um, let's see. The original story. This, so that was the original story pitched by Sussman. Um, bu- 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 bum. The other, the, uh, Sussman, uh, first of all, was basically like, my idea was better. This is stupid. He was also pointing out that, like, I don't know if y'all remember, but there was actually a DS9 episode that had the same, like, time travel paradox Mm -hmm. thing in it involving the Defiant. Um, it's an episode called Children of Time. Uh, Sussman, a longtime Trekkie, this is from Memory Alpha, Sussman, a longtime Trekkie himself, pointed out the similarity in the stories to the show's executive producers, but was overruled. Those in yeah, charge felt that the story for E Squared was sufficiently different, and that enough years had passed between the two areas of the shows to explore this theme again. So they told him to shut the hell up. <laughs> yes, basically. I mean, um, like, listen, how many retold stories do we get from, from, like, Star Trek show to Star Trek show, though? Yeah, but, like... Exactly. It's been like less than 10 years. <laughs> um, because yeah, DS9 started in, I don't know. Well, I don't know when it was the defiance. So we're talking like 95, 96 ish. And this mm-hmm. is 2003, 2004. Right. So right. like, yeah. Uh, oh, 2004. Um, yeah. So in Sussman's pitch, the starship Columbia NX2 would have used the Zindi space vortex, yada, yada, yada. Um, 
Sussman was asked to revise the story, making Enterprise travel into the past and thus having the crew meet themselves and their own descendants, much as the Defiant crew had done in Children of Time. Now, this is not the only show to have done this. Um, Stargate Universe did kind of a similar thing, as did... Um, well, that's gone from my memory forever, so never mind. Yeah. The- um, there have been other other shows and uh, ha- that have explored this this same theme of like we've been sent back in time and now we're meeting our descendants. Uh, Stargate Universe was a that was a fun one because like there were humans all over that part of the galaxy then. I like that show. It was a good show. I liked it. Also, the completely unnecessary um, Flox invented the Vulcan hybrid happened here. That was kind of stupid. Like, that didn't mm. need to happen. Yeah, I think it only needed to happen because, like, there was previous, like, statements that said Vulcans and humans couldn't bang. Yeah, but, like, it's okay. We didn't need to know about, like, we know they eventually figured out because of Spock. We didn't need Flox to be the inventor of it, you know? Right. It's the thing this show likes to do where they, like, it always has to be about that. Like they're the first ones to meet the Borg. They're the first ones to meet the Ferengi. Like they had to retcon everything, you know? Sure. Um, it's not my favorite thing. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that, that's pretty much all I had for the deep dive. Just a short and sweet discussion of what the episode could have been. Um, that I think, uh, I think would have been better. Uh, and it's really a shame that, um, the, the producers, probably Brandon and Braga because they're assholes. Um, overwrote what was like objectively a better idea by the writer. So interesting. Yeah, it is. It is certainly interesting that it was a pretty different storyline before. Like, I'm not surprised. Like, you know, changes happen from from start to finish, but it is, is a, a radically different storyline. Yeah, and some of that was my own creative um input onto the general plot. But I think that, like, yes, I agree with you. That, like, you took what was a new and interesting idea and turned it into something that's different, but also the same as something you've already done. We. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, that is that. So, uh, we will be back, uh, in a minute with uh, some sort of potpourri. Cool, 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 cool. Man, we're cruising through today, I'll tell you what. Well, I was thinking that, too, but, like, I realized that, like, a fair amount of screen time was spent on the CGI battle. So, like... Yeah, CGI battle and like flashback and yeah, flashback and then like old T'Pol just milling about a room. <laughs> Would you like, Would you some, like some tea while I talk to you about how you need to bang Trip Tucker? <laughs> like seriously, it's this big. <laughs> it's a good emotional outlet. <laughs> By emotional outlet, I mean huge dong. <laughs> Oh uh, gosh. Alright, oh, you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, huge dog. <laughs> 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 uh, he calls it his gator. You alright, babe? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. All right, so for today's potpourri, I would like to to uh, to introduce you to our new segment, "Complete That Ship." And by ship, I don't mean starship. I, of oh, course, God. mean relationship. That's right. We had so much shipping going on this episode. I figured it'd be great to do a little little shipping matchup of our own. Y'all ready? Okay. I can't tell if this is like a judge to trivia game. It is or, a trivia game, yes, yes. Oh, okay. That, is, that right. is what we're doing, yes. Okay. All right. I'm or gonna if give it was you... just like, a, I'm going to give you three names and you have to tell me a fuck, Mary kill. I was like, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, I'm going to give you one half of the relationship. You're going to have to give me the other person. All right. Okie doke. All right. Um, okay. first, just, to, first to the post just, or? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll go, we'll go first to the post. Let's go there. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to give you, so just as a heads up, these are all, like, longer-term relationships. These aren't, like, one-episode relationships. Uh, Keiko. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, that is my first clue. <laughs> it is Keiko. Who is the, uh, the, who is she shipped Chief with? Chief O'Brien. Miles O'Brien. 
No. Miles O'Brien. Rob got it first. You, okay, you don't know how many Chief O'Briens there were in Starfleet. <laughs> <laughs> he did say Miles O'Brien. Yeah. All right. Next one. Riker. Fuck. Troy is correct. I knew it started with T, and I'm like, T, T, fuck. All right. Tom Paris. Torres. Yep. Alana Torres. The, are these going to get harder? Some are harder than others. Honestly, like, I because I selected ones that were, like, you know, more than, like, one episode relationships, you should know most of them. Oh, man, we should do that. We should revisit this game, but it'll be, like, the fling edition. Mm, the... Yeah. All right. Benjamin Sisko. Oh, God. Oh, good question. Huh. Huh. Hey, Rob, you don't have, like, any DS9 knowledge, right? So you're pretty much screwed. Did no, I it? have I've watched DS9. Oh, I you don't have a okay. watch through. It's been I think since college since I've seen it. Um gotcha. It wasn't no, it wasn't her. What I mean, he was married. I'm not he, talking about the one who died before the before tragically the before the fucking yeah, show, yeah. Uh Man, I don't even I don't even remember him dating anyone. Oh, it was pretty long term too, yeah. It was it was involved she was involved in several episodes. Yeah. Shit. Uh, you know, I'm just going to throw a name out there that I know is wrong. I was just going to say, um, what's your face, Dax? The second Dax? No. Nope. I don't, f- I don't Rob, feel like no. that's right. It's not. Rob, you, do you have a guess? Luxana Troy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she was into Odo, wasn't she? She was super into yes, Odo. Yes, there was, there was an yeah. Odo episode. Yep. Was it the priestess? Uh, Cassidy Yates, the, uh, the, sh- the shipping lady? Yes. The shipping lady. Yeah, she had like ran like a shipping company. Yeah. Oh, you know, I do not remember that. Was that the last couple seasons? It was later on. It was like during like like maybe like slightly before Dominion War that it started, or like right around the same time. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't, I do not remember that at all. Oh, that was a good one. Yep. So like some of them are tougher than others, but like yeah, you'll get most of these. All right. Uh, Hugh Culber. Let's pretend I don't remember who that is. Oh Flux? come on. Hugh Culber. Hugh. Oh, uh, the scientist board? dude. I'm sorry. Oh God, what's his name? The fucking tardigrade re- replacement. Oh, name. oh, 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 Stamets. Stamets is correct. Oh, oh, oh fuck, Doctor Cole. Oh, Doctor Sexy. Sorry, I forgot his name because like he's Doctor Sexy <laughs> to me. I've never used that one for sure. So, his first name is Hugh. What a Hugh wildly yeah, yeah. shitty name for such a yeah. sexy guy. You Culber and Paul Stamets. All right. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Next one. Worf. Gen Z attacks. That is correct. There is a second bonus option here that is much harder. Uh. That, that, that kind of problematic uh, Klingon woman that Riker conjured for him in like the fourth episode of TNG. No. However, you're like half right. <laughs> yeah, uh, he ended up with a. He ended up with. Um, he ended up with uh, one of the Klingon ladies from that one house after. Um, the... No, not what I'm talking about. Oh, it's his child's mother. Bitch, you I don't the, remember who that is. The one he's a terrible father for. Yeah, I remember Alexander. Alexander. Yeah, I don't remember his. Was his mom on the mom. show? Yeah, yeah, she like. On a couple episodes. She, like, dies on the show, actually. Oh, Jesus oh. Christ. That's how he I ends up taking that. Alexander. Kaylair. Oh, okay. Kaylair. Kaylair. Yeah. I forgot that he and Jadzia hooked up. Yep. Jadzia Dex, yep. Um, Odo. Luxana Troy. God no. damn it. No. Uh, but, but also um, that Bajoran uh, security. Um, uh, I need a name. What is her Kira? fucking name? Kira. Kira. Thank you. He's got Kira. it. He got it. All right. Stupid DS9, man. I don't remember all that shit. What is her last name? Narice. Narice. Oh, wait, no. Narice is the first name because they gave Kira Narice. Kira Narice. Yeah, Kira no, Narice. I think, I think Narice is her given name and Nira is her family. Or Kira is her family name, if I remember. That correctly. might be right. That might be right. Uh, Captain Decker. A little movie one for you. Oh, it's got to be what's her face, right? Um, Nurse Chapel. <laughs> no, no, what's her face that turned into the android? 
I don't remember her name, dude. I, I've not seen that. I've seen that movie once, and it was at least 10 years ago. Lieutenant Ilya? Sure. Ilya? That's what I said, yeah. Oops. All right. Sarek. Ambassador Sarek. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh, oh. Um, Jessica. Alice in Wonderland Jessica. Mom. I'm sorry. Jessica. <laughs> uh, not the one I was looking for. Is that not her name? Spock's mom. I don't remember her name. I can't remember it. Starts with an A. Amanda? Amanda. Amanda is right. Oh, I got it first then. Fuck you. Yeah. For bonus points, do you remember your last name? Spock? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's something something very (laughs) standard. It's like Jones or Smith or something like that. It is pretty, pretty normal last name. Especially, yeah, I mean. Black? Uh, No, Grayson. You're close, actually. Yeah. Grayson. Yeah, Amanda Grayson. All right. And so then finally, I have Spock. Oh, uh, 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 no, not, not Kelvin. Topring is right. All uh, right. Bonus, bonus option. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bonus option here. Nurse Chapel. Chapel. There you go. All right, you both got one there. I should have gotten one for a horror, too. Jesus Christ. No. No. Sorry, right. sorry. I only go with the hottest actors. <laughs> <laughs> I do like a Zoe Saldana. Two, three. Oh, Rob won legitimately. Yes! <laughs> legitimately won a trivia. That's because wow. he cheated. <laughs> he cheated <laughs> by he cheated by remembering some bullshit that I don't remember. By a score of five to four, Rob wins this one. Dude, Completely I couldn't. Legitimately. I could not have even answered one of these questions. <laughs> I haven't seen Voyager. That's true. Yeah, you haven't seen Voyager yet. All right. I well, couldn't that... answer half of these questions because my brain doesn't work. So I don't understand. <laughs> All right. Well, that will wrap up our proper segment for the uh, for the episode. Ooh, uh, this as, is a uh, short episode. As... We're gonna need that. We need to stretch. Mariah, come come do some stand up com- comedy or something. Quick, somebody vamp. Wait, uh, no. Do some like knitting ASMR. Oh God. Click 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 click. But no, funny is, I no. haven't done any knitting this time. No, because knitting ASMR oh. is what I have to fucking edit out of every goddamn episode <laughs> with you two. God, fuck. So right, many needle that's why, drops. That's why it's funny that I haven't done any knitting this <laughs> time. And I have this very nice felt mat. Yes, I bought a mat so that you two will stop fucking click clacking on the table with needles and water bottles and shit. Click, 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 click. click. Um, click, okay. Click. What do Crusher, Worf, and Troy have in common? What? One's a doc, one's a Worf, and one's a marina. That was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, shit. That's... Y- Yeoman Rand complained to Kirk that someone had drilled a peephole into her boudoir. Kirk promised he... Kirk promised her he would look into he it. He would look into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would look into it, yeah. <laughs> what do you call a shit on the bridge? What? The deck? Come on. <laughs> Got it. No. The captain's log. Ah. Uh, I like that one. Anyway, there you go. Is that enough? Sure. Thank that you. Was perfect. <laughs> Man, after All that right. first one, they just really got shitty after that. <laughs> this is on Reddit, too, so this might make a good potpourri later. There you go. <laughs> Reddit Star Trek jokes. All right. Well, as Stanford said at the top, uh, please uh, rate, review, subscribe. We are five-star men. Give us all the stars. Plus and lady. All your, and, and lady. Five-star people. Okay. I'm inclusive. Shut up. Um, and, uh, and tell all your friends. Um, who like Star Trek, or maybe those who don't and just want to listen to a bunch of idiots talk about Star Trek. Oh, we could uh, definitely provide that. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, will catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Captain's Log Supplemental. You can follow us on Twitter at PodCLS or send us hate mail at PodCLS3 at gmail.com.